Welcome to EE World. I'm editor Martin Rowe. The International Microwave Symposium took place the week of June 20th in Denver, Colorado. EE World was there. In this video, we visited the Keysight Technologies booth where Randy Becker gave us a demonstration of the company's new direct digital synthesis DDS based RF signal generator. In this video, Randy will show us noise floor images and how they can be reduced using DDS, claiming that because the instrument uses no IQ modulator and instead is able to send uh, noise floor images directly out of the DAC. Randy will explain that. The instrument is called the UXA, and Randy will use first a multi-tone signal to show that noise floor and then follow up with uh, signals from various cellular technologies ranging from 2G to Edge CDMA, 4G, and finally 5G new radio, and then a 160 megahertz Wi-Fi signal. So this is Keysight's latest, greatest uh, microwave vector signal generator. It offers, uh, it's based on a direct digital synthesis architecture which eliminates all of the many issues we've been uh, combating for, for many, many years with generators that are all based on IQ modulators. Until today, that's how every generator has been uh, put together. Yep. And you can never, ever get those IQ modulators perfectly balanced, especially as you go wider and wider in bandwidth. You can't keep them 90 degrees quadrature all the time. You have little uh, phase offsets, DC offsets. And uh, I'm going to show you what a, a representative signal looks like when played on such a signal generator. Okay, so let's see that. I have that here. So you see my multi-tone signal. I've created a notch over there on the uh, right side. Normally, when you have a continuous modulation, you wouldn't see these images. But I think your eye can clearly see those images between the tones that I've created. And in the very middle, you see a high amount of LO. Normally you think you have all this dynamic range from the top down here to the noise floor, but wait a minute, no, you have this much range. So you're uh, much more greatly limited in what you can do with this because of that limitation. Because of, because of that noise floor down there? Well, because of the images that you see up here, yeah. Um, and we want to get rid of that. Okay. And until now, we haven't been able to get rid of it. So what have we done? Well. We've based this new generator on a direct digital synthesis architecture, which means we come out of the DAC with an RF signal directly. Mm -hmm. We go through a little bit of signal conditioning, amplifiers, attenuators, and then right to the front panel. There is no IQ modulator that we pass through like every other generator does today. And if you look at the spectrum now on the UXA, you'll find that, in fact, it looks nearly perfect. The theoretical spectrum that you've always wanted, now you can have it. No LO feed through, no images, and we're doing that over a fairly wide bandwidth. Here I'm doing it, I think, about over, uh, or actually about 800 megahertz. So what else can you do with this? Well, we can generate uh, lots of different signals at the same time. Now that we have this beautiful spectrum, we can use that to do things like this. Let me recall a different setup that has something a little more interesting. Instead of a multi-tone, I'm going to create basically the whole a digital series of cellular communications formats. Okay. Over here on the far left, we have GSM and Edge separated by one megahertz, mm -hmm. but because the band with this two and a half gigahertz, that looks like a single tone. Sure. It's jumping up and down because it's bursted. We have wideband CDMA, which is kind of funny because wideband back in the day was, mm -hmm. we thought was five megahertz. That's no longer considered wideband, but followed by a 4G 20 megahertz LTE signal, then 100, 200, 400 uh, megahertz new radio component carriers, mm -hmm. and lastly, a 160 megahertz 802.11ac signal. We're doing all of that uh, out of this baseband generator. I can move these around in real time. We can do things like fading. I'll just turn that on quickly so you can see that. Here I've decided to arbitrarily fade that signal. I could do all of them, some of them, uh, but you can see here this one moving up and down. In the multi-channel models, of course, that would be great for doing spatial multiplexing with the full MIMO fading. 